from what it is to what it means to life as a whole with its discovery, join me as I show you the world's first ever animal that doesn't breathe found. I want you to right now picture an animal, any animal on the planet that you know is real. It can be a bird in the sky, a fish in the ocean, a person that you know, a pet that you love, whatever you want. No matter what creature or being you chose, there are certain inevitable things that they have in common. And one of the biggest ones by far is these creatures have to breathe oxygen in order to live. Now obviously there are many ways to breathe oxygen and not all animals do it in the same way. Some creatures like humans and most mammals breathe through their mouths and noses. But fish breathe through their gills that filters out the things that they don't need and takes in the oxygen. Some creatures just do it via their skin in rather unique and creepy fashion. The point is, no matter what, these creatures must have oxygen to live. This is a basic law of nature when it comes to animals, or at least so we thought. Because in late February, a brand new discovery was made that does indeed drastically change what we think about life in terms of animals. Researchers have discovered a unique organism that doesn't need to breathe. Instead, the tiny parasite lives in salmon tissue and evolves so that it doesn't need oxygen to produce energy. This creature has been officially named Hanagaya salmonicola and it is a mere 10 cells in its entirety. Stephen Atkinson, Senior Research Associate at Oregon State University's Department of Microbiology, had a lot to say on the matter in terms of what it is and what it can do. When we think of animals, we picture multicellular creatures that need oxygen to survive. Unlike many single-celled organisms, including protists and bacteria, he told CNN. In our work, we have shown that there is at least one multicellular animal that does not have the genetic toolkit to use oxygen. The H. seminecula is a mixosome cnidarian, a type of animal related to jellyfish and coral. It lives inside salmon and steals ready-made nutrients from it, Atkinson said, instead of consuming oxygen directly. Now on the surface, this sounds pretty basic, especially being that it is a parasite, and parasites feed off of their host to survive, all fairly standard. But the problem is that even the most basic of parasites still need oxygen to feed. So the fact that Henegaya seminecula is astonishing, especially when you consider that it used evolution and its environment to help do that. And it is the only creature to seemingly be able to do that. What's more, it's important to note that when we say it used its environment to evolve to not need tissue, we're not talking about the ocean or seas or other water-filled places that the salmon it infects lives in. Rather, we're talking about the salmon itself. Confused? We'll explain. You see, parasites live within their hosts in key areas, where they can get what they need to survive, right? Well, in the case of Henegaya seminecula, they live within the very muscle of the salmon itself. And they do it in such a way that they don't harm the salmon at all. In fact, it's believed by some that the salmon, like other hosts, don't even notice them. Oh, and if you're curious, no, it doesn't seem like this parasite can infect humans. So we dodged a bullet on that one. Getting back to its environment, this part of the salmon has very low oxygen content. So low that most creatures couldn't survive here, except for the Henegaya salmonecula. And the reason is simple it stopped itself from having mitochondria in its body. In most living creatures, mitochondria are what turn food into energy. They are what gives us our strength in many ways. And yet, Henegaya seminecula doesn't have it. It doesn't need it. And it breathes just fine without it. In fact, many who have studied the parasite have praised its unique ability to live on when it shouldn't, and even be more efficient without it. By losing the genome, the parasite is saving energy by not having to copy genes for things it no longer needs, Atkinson said. Before we continue to blow your mind about this revolutionary animal, be sure to like our video and subscribe to the channel. That way you don't miss any of our weekly videos. I'm sure at this point you're wondering how all of this or any of this is possible. This all but flies in the face of basic laws of living. Granted, we found very unique forms of life that can live in the highest of mountains to the depths of the Mariana Trench, or even thermal vents that have thousands of degrees of heat pouring through them. But they're still following the basic rules of oxygen. 
yet this parasite isn't. The researchers don't know for certain what the parasite relies on instead of oxygen, but Atkinson said he assumes it absorbs molecules from its host that have already produced energy. Atkinson and his team don't think this species is the last oxygen-free animal either. He said he expects to discover many more species that can survive without oxygen, and probably even weirder modes of existence. Which is a very scary thought if we're being honest, because this notion of weirder modes of existence opens up a lot of doors that sci-fi and fantasy fans likely know all about and rightfully fear. Yet there's still more to the irony of this parasite. Mainly, it breaks a trend that has been going on for billions of years, if you believe in evolution and the Big Bang Theory, that is. Because at one point in time, the Earth not only didn't have that much oxygen, but the creatures that lived on Earth were fine without it. How is that possible? We've always needed oxygen on Earth, you might be saying. But 2.5 billion years ago, the world didn't have a need for a lot of oxygen. And oxic bacteria was not only fine without it, they could die if there was too much of it. Oxygen was only a very minor part of the atmosphere at that point in time. Then along came cyanobacteria, a microscopic creature who learned a technique that almost wiped out all life on Earth. That technique was photosynthesis. So when cyanobacteria came along and started pumping oxygen into the atmosphere via photosynthesis, the bacteria and other microorganisms started to die out. Yes, the Earth almost had all life wiped out because of oxygen. This actually included cyanobacteria, because the oxygen they were pumping out started to change in the atmosphere, which affected their process. Not only that, the extra oxygen in the atmosphere caused the Huronian glaciation, which basically froze the world and its waters for an incredible amount of time. Life didn't endure though, and now cyanobacteria and plants are vital to the Earth's survival. Many consider this to be the first mass extinction event, and it goes to prove just how much the Earth has changed since the beginning of its life to where it is now. And since that point, oxygen has been vital to living in regards to how creatures process gases and give off energy as a result. More specifically, this happened when a larger Archean engulfed a smaller bacterium, and somehow the bacterium's new home was beneficial to both parties, and the two stayed together. That symbiotic relationship resulted in the two organisms evolving together, and eventually those bacteria ensconced within became organelles called mitochondria. Every cell in your body except red blood cells has large numbers of mitochondria, and these are essential for the respiration process. They break down oxygen to produce a molecule called adenosine triphosphate, which multicellular organisms use to power cellular processes. So without mitochondria, we couldn't live. And yet, Henegaya seminecula has not only lived, it's thrived within the salmon for who knows how long. No, really, we don't know how long. And that's part of the reason this is so scary. Because if we don't know how it's doing this act, or how long it's been doing it, we can't figure out how it evolved into the state that we have right now. And for scientists, that's a big no-no. You need to know how this happened, and that's the truth of the matter. But let's circle back to a question I'm sure you're thinking about right now. Could this really happen in more than one animal? Or just as important, could it happen in a much more advanced animal than a parasite that lives in a salmon? The answer, quite simply, is yeah. And not so ironically, it's because of Henegaya Samanecula that we can say this. Because if you asked us at the beginning of the year 2020, we would have only been able to say that it could be possible based on certain creatures that live in low oxygen environments. And because evolution has a weird way of working at times. But that would have been solely a speculation sort of deal. But because Henegaya Samanecula has been discovered, and has been proven to not breathe oxygen in order to survive. That means that theoretically, there could be legions of other creatures that we don't know about that have this feature, or even something more dramatic and pronounced. And before you say, there can't be that many new creatures out there in the world that haven't been discovered, perish that thought. Because every single year, we find more and more new creatures that haven't been discovered previously. Heck, we're still finding creatures that we thought have been extinct for millions of years, and yet clearly aren't. 
like the coelacanth or the frilled shark. What's more, don't forget that while humanity has spanned the globe, we don't know what's in every inch of the globe. Think of places like the Amazon rainforest, Madagascar, Antarctica, the Australian outback and more. These places have tons of areas that haven't been researched thoroughly. And because of that, there are tons of new life forms that could be out there with this unique evolution. And should we find even a handful more that have this unique ability, it could well and truly help us understand more about evolution as a whole, as well as the process our body can undergo in the most extreme instances in order to survive. After all, evolution is a big part of our history as a race, as well as a big part of animal life as a whole. As Charles Darwin and others have noted over the centuries, animals adapt to their various environments and to certain stimuli in order to make sure that they can endure. A classic example are the finch species on the Galapagos Islands. You'll find many different versions of them there, and they all have a feature that helps them survive, such as one that has a much bigger, stronger beak that will allow them to break hard nuts that they have to eat. Another good example comes from the oceans. There once was a fish that was targeted by the fearsome mako shark. Over time, they evolved their bodies in order to make it so that they were faster and more evasive than the shark. But then the mako realized this, and then it evolved its own body to ensure that it could catch the creature again. So that's evolution and counter-evolution. So imagine what would happen if we were able to understand what not only caused the Hanagaya Samanecula to develop without mitochondria, but whether other creatures can do this as well. If we were able to do this, and then over time figure out how to replicate that into other animals, it could potentially change everything. Imagine if we could be able to go places without breathing oxygen. It could change how we do both deep sea and space travel. Granted, this would be many hundreds of years into the future more than likely, but if we could figure out how to not breathe oxygen and yet still survive, it would open up a lot of doors that right now are closed because of the fact that we need oxygen to survive. For example, one of the main deterrents of space colonies is that to have one, you need oxygen to support a potentially massive population, and you would need spacesuits to travel outside of that colony. But without the need for oxygen, one of those problems is already solved. And for the other problem, they would be necessary, but merely to protect against pressure and radiation which means that they could be cheaper and more efficient than if they needed to pump oxygen inside of it for the human host. Again, this is something that could only happen in the future with much more study, but no matter what way you look at it, it's very intriguing. The discovery of Henegaya Semenecula is going to be one that is for the history books in all the ways that matter. This is an animal that defies all known conventions of life, and we still don't know how it's doing what it's doing, and yet it's doing it just fine. There are going to be teams of scientists breaking down everything about this creature to see why it does what it does, and there are going to be even more trying to figure out exactly how many more creatures are out there in the world that can live without oxygen. No matter what though, our world just got a little more incredible. Thanks for watching everyone. What do you think about this unique creature that doesn't need oxygen in order to breathe? Can you believe that such a life form exists in the world today? What do you think this could mean for the Earth as a whole going forward? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time on the channel.